This episode has been made possible by Call of War. Join us in Call of War, a free online PvP strategy game, and challenge thousands of users worldwide with a real country of your choice. Call of War is a place for history to meet action, with high-impact World War II combat gameplay, where territory control is instrumental to winning the game. Use a wide range of technological advancements and weapons, from armored tanks and planes to the most advanced V-2 rockets and nukes from that era. Each country has a number of provinces, with each province having numerous key traits such as victory points, terrain features, and use of individual strategies. Games can be played against other real players and can last for several weeks until one player finally has enough points to clinch a victory. Expand your military force by occupying neighboring territories and cities. Manage and trade their resources to build a powerful army to crush the opponents. Call of War is free to play with up to 100 real players per map on PC or your mobile phone. And by clicking the link in the description, you'll get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free, available only for 30 days. Choose your country and fight your way to victory. Honey Shaft, the resistance fighter who taunted, I shoot better at her execution. World <laughs> War II. When the Nazis began to expand their territory into neighboring countries during World War II, resistance sprung up to oppose them. One such country was the Netherlands, invaded by Germany in May 1940. They suffered harshly under the Nazi occupation, with over 70% of the country's Jewish citizens becoming victims of the Holocaust. In 1941, the Dutch resistance, largely organized by the National Communist Party, were formed and men and women who opposed the Nazi regime and persecution of Jewish citizens joined their ranks. This is the story of one of their most iconic members, the girl with the red hair, Hani Schacht. A girl so brave and dedicated in her beliefs, her last words were said to have been, Ich schiet better, or I shoot better, as she was executed. Born on September 16, 1920, Hani's real name was Janice Johanna Schaft, but she usually went by the nickname Yo. It wasn't until she became involved in the resistance that she began to operate under the name Hani instead. Described as a quiet and intellectual child, Hani's upbringing was largely inauspicious and ordinary, except for the tragic death of her older sister from diphtheria in 1927. Raised by a church-going mother and father who was a member of the Social Democratic Party, from the very beginning she was taught to despise fascism, and her interest in politics reared their head at a young age. Hani soon decided that she wanted to become a human rights lawyer and was encouraged by her parents, and so at the age of 18 she went off to the University of Amsterdam to study law. While she was there, Hani's political opinions only grew stronger as she became a student of Professor H. J. Poss, a passionate anti-fascist lecturer, and she became more outspoken against the Nazi regime. Two of her closest friends, Sonja Frank and Felina Polak, were Jewish and their treatment during the Nazi occupation only increased Hani's anger and hatred of the regime, spurring her to take action. She began small creating a women's political club and listened to the illegal radio station of the Dutch resistance, Radio Orange. In 1943, things got even worse in the Nazi-occupied Netherlands. All university students were pressured into signing a declaration of allegiance to the Nazis, which 80% of them refused to do, including Hani. As a result, she left Amsterdam to return to her parents in Haarlem, taking her two Jewish friends, Sonja and Felina, with her and helped them go into hiding. While back with her parents, she joined the Council of Resistance, an organization with ties to the Dutch Communist Party. It was there that she would meet sisters Trus and Freddy Overstecha, the trio going on to become three of the strongest resistance fighters in the Netherlands. For a while, she would collect funds from the willing people of Harlem, who wanted to contribute to the resistance's efforts, and she continued to help hide Jewish citizens in her parents' home. But soon, Hani wanted more. She asked the resistance for a weapon, wanting to be involved in the actual killing of Nazi officers. Hani was given a gun and the name of a collaborator that she had to assassinate. She didn't know it, but the gun had blank ammunition and the target was actually one of the group and not an actual collaborator. But after pulling the trigger multiple times at him to no effect, she passed her test. The Dutch resistance had wanted to be sure that she would have the nerve to pull the trigger when the time came. 
From then on, she and the Oversteja sisters would become prominent members of the resistance, luring Nazi officers and Dutch Nazi collaborators to secluded places before killing them. But the girls had morals about their assignments and would not take on every job offered by the resistance. For example, Honey refused one job that involved kidnapping a Nazi officer's child, knowing that if anything went wrong, the child would be killed, something she believed would make them as bad as the people they were fighting against. She is said to have told the sisters, we are not Hitlerites, and resistance fighters don't shoot children. The girls became major thorns in the Nazis' side, blowing up railroads, disabling bridges, and helping to smuggle children out of concentration camps. Officers were unable to identify the dangerous trio, until one day a witness saw Hani Schaft in the middle of an assassination attempt, identifying her to Nazi officers by her iconic red hair. Without knowing her name, the girl with the red hair was put on the Dutch authorities' most wanted list. Things started to get more dangerous for Hani Schaft in June 1941, when an assassination attempt on Dutch police collaborator Willem Ragut went awry. Tasked with carrying out the mission alongside fellow resistance fighter Jan Bonnekamp, Hani shot Ragut before quickly cycling away, but she had not killed him. Before Bonnekamp could finish the job, Ragut retaliated, shooting him in the stomach. Bonnekamp killed Ragut, but managed to escape, although mortally wounded. He was picked up shortly after and taken to hospital, where he was confronted on his deathbed by German officers posing as resistance agents. Although no one is sure what happened next, sources believe that Bonacamp was tricked into giving Hani Schaff's name and address before he died. In response to learning this information, SS officers arrested Hani's parents and sent them to the Dutch concentration camp Wucht to try to convince her to come out of hiding and give herself up. Their plan failed. Despite Hanny falling into a deep depression and becoming ill as a result of the heavy emotional toll of Bonacamp's death and her parents' arrest, she did not give herself up, but for a while she did cease carrying out resistance work, unable to continue in her current mental state. Two months later, her parents were released. Relieved that they were now fairly safe, Hanny Shaft gradually resumed her resistance work. She took on the name of Johanna Elderkampf, dyed her hair black and wore glasses, so she was unrecognizable from the description given by Bonacamp on his deathbed. She resumed her assassination and sabotage work with the Oversteja sisters and was also responsible for distributing illegal newspapers and weapons to other resistance fighters. In 1945, the war was reaching its inevitable end, when on March 21st, Hani was stopped and searched at a military checkpoint in Harlem while carrying the illegal communist newspaper De Wahrheit which translated meant the truth, as well as secret resistance documentation. The German guards were not initially concerned by their discovery until they realized that Hani was also carrying a pistol, which was most unusual for a woman, even one in the resistance. She was taken to a prison in Amsterdam and interrogated, but refused to disclose any information on her own identity or that of her fellow fighters. During the week she was held there, her beloved friend Trus tried and failed to mount a rescue attempt. Eventually, a pro-German Dutch former colleague of Hani's, Anna Weinhoff, identified her by the roots of her red hair that had begun to peek through her darker dye job. The girl with the red hair had been found. On April 17, 1945, the 24-year-old Hani Schaft was taken to the dunes of Oferfein, near Blumendal where she was executed by two Dutch Nazi officials. The first attempt failed when the officer missed his shot, only grazing her. In response, she is said to have laughed and mocked the officer, saying, I shoot better, before the second bullet hit her in the temple, ending her life. The war ended three weeks later. After the war, the mass grave that had become Hanny's resting place was exhumed. 422 resistance fighters had been killed and buried there on the Ofrefein dunes, 421 men and one woman, Hani Schaft. Hani was reburied at an honorary cemetery in Ofrefein, and a bronze statue of her was later unveiled at Keanu Park in Harlem. Her good friends, the Oversteja sisters, survived the war but never forgot their friend and fought for her and their own deeds to be remembered. 
Sadly, Hani's role as a Dutch hero was downplayed for decades due to the public distrust of communism and the celebrations that were carried out by the Dutch Communist Party regarding her as an icon, to the point when in 1951 commemoration at her grave was forbidden. In the years in between, Turs Oversteger established the Hani Schaft Memorial Foundation, commemorating her friend and other female resistance fighters, even naming her oldest daughter after Hani. Thanks to their work and the declining fear of communism, in the 1990s commemorations of Hani Schaff's life and legacy were once again allowed. She is remembered on the last Sunday of every November across the Netherlands in a day of remembrance. The girl with the red hair, whose last words will forever be immortalized, I shoot better. This episode was brought to you by Call of War. The pace of the game is challenging, and the strategy element is the key. So take charge and write the history yourself. Click the link in the description below to get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Available only for 30 days.